Well, there's a little bit of setup to do to create a pattern like this in Adobe Illustrator. It is quite a lot of fun and quite simple to do. We're going to create a brand new file here. I'm creating a document which is square at 1000 by 1000 pixels in size. It will help to stick with these kind of measurements at least the first time you do this. I'm just going to shrink my document down a little bit. I'm going to add a rectangle to this document that is the same 1000 by 1000 pixels. Right now it's filled with white and it has a black stroke. I'm going to remove the black stroke, just leave the white fill. I'm going to choose object and then path and then split into grid. So that I can do this pretty quickly, I'm going to settle for a five by five grid. But if you wanted to make yours a little bit more complex, then you could increase the grid to, for example, 10 by 10. It's just going to take you quite a bit longer to do the selection of color process. I'll click OK. This creates a five by five grid in our document. You'll go to the swatches panel next. If you don't see it, choose window and then swatches. You come down here to the library, go down here to gradients and and choose spectrums. I'm going to choose this spectrum gradient so it's already applied to the document but I'm going to the gradient tool because I want to put it across the entire area here so I'm going to click at the top corner hold my left mouse button down and just head in a downwards direction. If I add the shift key, then it's going to be applied as a perfectly 45 degree angle gradient. I'll let go of the left mouse button and then let go of the shift key. Just click away from that because it looks really scary. Okay, what we have now, if we have a look in the layers panel, I'm just pressing F7 to get to my layers panel, is we have a series of shapes, every one of which has a gradient applied to it. It's just that the gradient is applied in a different sort of arrangement. So what we need to do next is to extract some color from these. The best way to do this is to select one of these squares. We're going to work across the document and then down. So I have this first shape selected. It's actually down here in the layers palette. I'm going to the eyedropper tool and I'm going to position my cursor pretty much in the middle of this square, hold down the shift key and click once. What that does is it samples the middle color from this square and applies it to the square. Press V to get to the selection tool here. If you press the letter I, you'll get the eyedropper, just hold the shift key and click the letter V to select the next shape, the letter I to select the eyedropper, shift click for your color, and just do this across the document. It will take you a few minutes. It's not an impossible task, particularly if you learn those keystrokes, even if only for the purpose of this video and you forget them tomorrow. I'm gonna to go ahead and do this and we'll come back once I've selected all of my colors. As you're selecting your colors, you can curate them a little bit. So if you want to choose a color that is a little bit away from the color in the center, just click on that color. I'm happy with this. I'm going to select over everything. So I've got all of these shapes selected. I want to transform them. So I'm going to the transform dialog. I'll go to the transform option here. I'm going to make sure that my transformation is set to the middle of these nine boxes just for ease. I'm going to set a width and height of 707 and I'm going to set my rotation to be 135 degrees because I want the green at the top. So provided you rotate a factor of 45 degrees until you get the shape that you want at the top, then you're good to go. Everything's looking just fine here right now. So with everything still selected, I'm going to choose object and then pattern and then make. I'll click OK. From the Pattern Options dialog, I'm going to select Brick by Column, and then I'm going to set the width to 500, leaving the height at 1000. It's got a little bit smaller, but I'm just going to make sure it's 1000 because I want my tile to be a fixed size and a nice even size. I'm going to set this to 9 by 9 so that we can have a look and see what the pattern looks like. You can zoom in and out of the 
pattern preview here and let's just oh I thought I had the tile edge now this is my artboard showing let me just turn the artboard off for now so this is what the pattern is going to look like if you're happy with that just click done let me just go and re display my artboards. I find it easier to work without artboards quite often when I'm designing patterns. It's going to drag out a nice large shape rectangle. I've got its fill selected. Let's click on the pattern dialog and here is our pattern. You can use object transform scale to scale it to 50%. I won't transform the objects. I will just transform the pattern and click OK. So there is the pattern that we've created. As I said, you can get something a bit more detailed, a bit more robust if you create a square shape and then split it into more columns. So you're going to choose object path and then split into grid and use more columns and more rows to get more little boxes. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.